Uh, hi class, this is Professor Smith. I'll be doing problem number 19 on sample test 3 for chapters 5 and 6. In this example, we're asked to find all solutions of the equation in the interval from 0 to 2 pi, including 0, not including 2 pi, for sine x equal to the square root of the quantity 1 plus cosine x. In order to solve this equation, we want to eliminate the radical. Since it's a square root, we're going to square both sides. And we know that because it's the index is 2. Even though it's not written, it's a 2 understood to be there. So that's why we square both sides. If it were a cube root, we would cube both sides. Also recognizing anytime we square both sides, we might be introducing what's called extraneous solutions. In other words, negative values that wouldn't have worked, now once we square it, will work. So we want to make sure that we check our answers in the original equation. So let's open up math type to square both sides of this equation to eliminate the radical. When we simplify, the left-hand side will give us sine squared x equal to 1 plus cosine x. We'll also notice that we have two trig functions. We have cosine x on the right and sine x on the left. Since the sine x is squared, that's our clue to use a Pythagorean identity. And so I have a Pythagorean identity involving sine and cosine is sine squared x plus cosine squared x equal to 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for sine squared in terms of cosine squared, or I could replace the 1 with sine squared plus cosine squared x. Subtracting cosine squared x from both sides, And then rewriting that first equation, sine squared x equal to 1 plus cosine x, replacing that sine squared with 1 minus cosine squared. Now we have a quadratic with cosine on the left, which is in fact cosine squared, and cosine on the right. So what we're going to do is rewrite it so the cosines are all on the same side. I notice I have a 1 on the right and a 1 on the left, so if I subtract 1 from both sides, I'll get minus cosine squared x equal to cosine x. It's tempting to divide both sides by cosine, but whenever you have a variable expression, it's better to factor out. In other words, rewrite that quadratic in standard form and factor out rather than divide because we make the error of possibly dividing by zero, which would be a, a legal answer in the expression. So let's go ahead and add cosine squared x to both sides. And when we do that, we'll have cosine squared x plus cosine x. Now I have the cosine x on both sides and I can factor it out. So when I factor out a cosine x on the first term, that'll leave me with cosine x. And then when I factor out a cosine x from cosine x, I need a placeholder of 1. So it factors into cosine x and times the quantity cosine x equal plus 1. Setting each factor equal to 0, I'll get the first equation of cosine x equals 0. And the second equation is cosine x equal to negative 1. Setting, not setting each one <laughs> equal to 0, it turns out where is the cosine equal to 0? Well, the cosine is equal to 0 is if you look at the unit circle and you find the values on the unit circle where the x value, because cosine is the x value of the ordered pair on the unit circle, where the x values are 0. And the x values are 0 along that y-axis representing x equal to pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So whenever you have sine or cosine equaling 0 or plus or minus 1, that's our indication that we're going to get a quadrantal angle. So it's going to either be 90 degrees, 180, 270, or 0, or 0 pi over 2, pi, and 3 pi over 2. So in our case, x is going to be 3 pi over 2 and pi over 2. Cosine x equal to negative 1 would be the value where the x value on the unit circle would be negative 1, and that's going to occur at x equal to pi. All of these values are in the interval from 0 to 2 pi. But then remember when we squared both sides that we might introduce extraneous solutions. So let's make sure that in the original equations, 3 pi over 2, pi over 2, and pi all satisfy the original equation. 